Good morning. Welcome to the conference call for earnings for Randall Corp for Q3 2023. Before beginning our event, I remind you that is it is being translated simultaneously into English and also sign language. If you intend to hear in English, please click on the button interpretation, which is at the bottom of the screen. And to hear the translator, please click on mute original audio. This call, conference call is being recorded. It will be available right after the closing in our website for investor relations, ran, rirandomcorp.com. Looking at our agenda, our earnings and highlights of the quarter will be presented by our CEO, Sergio Carvalho, our CFO and DRI, Paulo Prignolato, and also CFO and Stefan Angeletti. Also, we will have with us in the Q&A session, the Investor Relations Director, Emerson de Souza, and our Coordinator for Investor Relations, Davi Barquichetti. I invite you to participate in the Q&A session. Please click on the button Q&A at the bottom of the screen or send your question by WhatsApp. You can also participate following the guidance on the screen. If we don't have time to answer all the questions live, we will get in touch after the closing. Before passing the floor to our directors, I remind you that the information given in this conference call are not guarantees of performance and involve risks and uncertainties. They refer to future events and depend on circumstances that may or may not occur. Now I'd like to pass the floor to our CEO, Sergio Carvalho. Good morning. It's good to have you with us in this conference call for earnings for Q3 2023. We are close to the end of the year, which was very intense and full of important deliveries, but also many challenges. In this sense, I would like to highlight that the continuity of our strategy and the execution of the plan for 2023 are happening within our expectations. Always, every time we need, we are making corrections, the necessary adjustments, adjusting our components companies to the scenarios and uncertainties, both in Brazil and abroad. And our diversification has been fundamental for us to maintain our business in a good rhythm, growing in a sustainable way, and generating value for our stakeholders. I could mention many examples here uh, in our five verticals, but in this quarter, I would highlight the contribution of auto parts for two main reasons. The first, to talk about the resilient results in a complex marketing. And the second to comment on a great business deal signed in the OEM markets. To bring more context, one of the points of great concern during 2023 has been the expressive drop in the volume of trucks in the market, including higher than the projections of the associations in the sector. We prepared ourselves for this drop in demand and we looked for alternatives to increase revenue and to preserve our margins. We worked more intensely in the export market. In replacement parts, we expanded our presence in the agricultural market. We internalized some production processes, and also we had the commitment of all our employees to do more and more and better. And after nine months in the current year, we have the satisfaction to share with you the excellent results of all these auction actions. We are being able not only to mitigate the impact on sales, but especially maintain the margin of auto parts at a level close to the years of normal market, even exposed to this strong drop in demand. We continue also executing our strategy, conquering and strengthening partnerships with large clients. In October, we signed a contract with one of the largest OEMs of trucks and buses to supply front axles through suspenses, and also a new product in our portfolio. This strengthens our leadership position as one of the largest companies in the Brazilian automotive market, and the relevance is seen also in numbers. We, we, we believe we will add revenue in auto parts around 7 billion reais in the next 10 years, an extra billing. So we're building the future tomorrow. 
an important landmark, but we haven't stopped. We're working on many other projects that are transformational for our companies due to the execution of our strategy that was shared in details with you during the Random Carp Day that we had in June. Now, you will have the opportunity to see more details during the site visit that we will have on our November 28 here in our plants in Caxias do Sul. Everything we have done allows us to come here to confirm the main indicators of our guidance that we gave in the beginning of the year. Esteban will present the results by business vertical, and you will observe that we have different scenarios in terms of results. But when we add up all the synergies and parts of each one of them, we have the beauty of what became Random Corp, a strong company in the present and more and more prepared for the future. I cannot comment that within the factors that contributed a lot for this are our initiatives in sustainability. We have made progress in ESG in the last years within the three pillars. In this quarter, one of the deliveries was the inauguration of the photovoltaic power plant made up of 2,000 solar panels that can generate all the energy used by our CTR, apart from supplying the surplus to shipping at Randon. The installation of the power plant also allowed us to live, deliver other solutions to our clients, which have projects with electric mobility, enabling that all vehicles developed and tested in the CDR use this clean energy. In other words, apart from having renewable energy generated in our operations, we will share this benefit with society in a direct way through development and testing of products. We will continue looking for opportunities like th these with profound connection between the best ESG practices and our businesses. I'd like to close saying that we're preparing our year for 2024. We still have a scenario of many uncertainties, both in the domestic and export market. On the other hand, we trust that the learning, the learning, what we learned in previous years, the excellent results of our companies in the present and plans for the future will allow us to have another cycle of accelerated growth with growing profitability, generating positive impacts for our business and for society. Now I pass the floor to Paulo, who will continue with the presentation. Thank you, Sergio. Good morning to all those who are participating in this conference call, the last one for this year. As Sergio already mentioned, many factors brought complexity to the business environment both in the domestic market and also in the export market. And the consolidated numbers that I will present now are the result of strong work, hard work from our teams, focus, and correct strategy. Beginning with consolidated net revenue, we see in the graph beside the growth of this indicator during the year, 8.3 billion year to date, 2023, similar to the one obtained in the same period in 2022. Positive highlights in the quarter were the revenues from companies acquired after Q3 2022, which together added 101 million reais in the period. The continuity of good demand in the semi-trailer market, supported by the positive moment of agriculture and the growth of replacement parts market both in terms of revenue and volumes. But we also had challenges such as a drop in volumes in auto parts, the segment that had the hardest impact because of the drop in the truck market and which continues to have negative effects this year, and a drop of sales in the export markets in the quarters, especially in OEMs. Now, going on to revenue from the export market, we have the consolidated data. As you can observe, we, we had a, a drop, in, especially in the comparison with Q2 2023, which is due especially to expressive drop in demand for semi-trailers in countries like Chile and Argentina, 
because of the uncertainties in this region. Less intense demand in the U.S. market, which affected the performance of Hercules in the period when compared to the previous quarter, and greater competition in some product lines due to the reopening of the Chinese market and the drop of logistics costs. On the positive side, the impact of these factors was compensated especially by a good performance in movement control, especially through its operations located abroad, and the addition of revenues of companies acquired after Q3 2022, Hercules and Juratech, which together represented $20.8 million in Q3 2023. Concerning our EBITDA margin, we're within the interval of for guidance, and it reached 15.4 year to date. In this quarter, we have as a highlight the resilience of auto parts, which continues delivering good performance even in a challenging context, and the progress of movement control which has represented records of profitability during this year. Nevertheless, we had greater pressure from margins in some businesses, which came due to competition in certain product lines in the domestic market, as well as the drop in revenues from the export market, which where the majority has margins that are higher than in the domestic market, especially in OEMs. Apart from this, the tax created in Argentina to increase the barriers to imports also affected the margins during this period, worth approximately 10 million reais. With this, our EBIT, the consolidated EBITDA margin reached 13.7% in the period. In this quarter, we did not have non-recurring events that could affect EBITDA, but we had an impact of tax for Randon Argentina, worth 18.8 million, which affected in a relevant way the net result of the company. The tax is is due to uh, is due to the end of the debt, which was considered to reduce the negative impacts of Argentinian uh, currency on our results. So, know more about this please read the explanatory notes available on our, on our investor relations site. Now talking about our in organic investments, we reached 187 million year to date. We're very cautious in approving new investments and we're giving priority to projects that will give us a quick return on investment to preserve our cash especially in more complex times in the market. In this quarter, I would like to highlight the following investments. Continuity of the project at Castor Tecmoji Guasu, which will begin operations in the first semester of 2024. Improvements in Hercules, our semi-trailer plant in the US, to, to continue to have great industrial, greater industrial automation. Now on the screen, we have the net debt of the company without the numbers of Randon Bank. At the end of September, we reached a leverage of 1.35 times EBITDA of the last 12 months, with a net debt of 2.1 billion reais. The drop in leverage in the last three months is due especially to lower need for working capital, especially due to reduction in inventories, and the reduction of the average cost of the debt. Another highlight was that S&P Global Ratings gave a corporate rating of the company on the national scale in Brazil in AA+, with a change in the perspective from stable to positive due to good profitability expectations reduction and reduction of leverage of the company in the next few years due to our re recovery in our markets and greater cash generation. I'd like to reinforce that we are committed with our financial discipline, very important and even fundamental to go through complex times like the one we have now. Our 
current cash position guarantees the payment and amortization of our debt until 2026. I'd like to close my pint. We have now data from the shareholders. We finalized Q3 with 44,000 shareholders. Foreigners continue expanding their position in our base, getting to 25% of the total in this period. Now I'd like to pass the floor to Esteban to talk about the market and results by business vertical. Thank you, Paulo. Good morning to all who are following us in this conference call. Continuing with our presentation, I would like to begin talking about uh, the general view of the market. We have seen during 2023 a drop in the volumes of trucks, stronger in production, especially due to an anticipation in 2022, high interest rates for financing and selectivity of credit. OEMs, which took measures to reduce the manufacturing of trucks in 2023 with layoffs and vacation are giving signs of a small recovery, reactivating shifts and stopping um, and canceling stops. The sales, which in the first semester of 23 were for trucks with Euro 5 en engines, are beginning to show uh, a, a change. And the products with Euro 6 are already half the sales. And we would like to say that the price of these vehicles is higher than the previous model, and many clients are buying the previous model, even with less benefits. In terms of semi-trailers, you can see the growth in production and sales on an annual and also quarterly basis. Even with the drop in the truck market, this segment had a good rhythm, supported by agribusiness and the renewal of the fleet of tanks in the country. Exports had a drop, especially due to instability in South America, as Paulo mentioned. And the replacement market is benefited from the drop in the production of new vehicles, and this brings more need for maintenance in the fleet. Now, going on to the rail sales by vertical, let's begin with OEMs. 1.2 billion reais in net revenue in the quarter, and represented $39 million in revenue in the export market in the period. The semi-trailer volume sold in the domestic market had a growth of 17% in comparison with Q3 22 and 40% when compared to Q2 23. This progress happened because we signed large contracts and we had more competitive sales, which and this strengthened our portfolio and allowed us to increase our market share, reaching 32% in the period. I have an advantage of 11 percentage points in relation to the second, second company. Now in the export market, there was a complex scenario, especially due to political and economic policies in Chile and Argentina, which concentrate the largest volume of products. And this really had an effect in comparison with Q3 23. Talking about Argentina, our operation in Rosario was affected by the difficulty for us to send the chassis, which is manufactured in Brazil, to that unit due to the import barriers created by the local government. With this, Randon Argentina had to stop during two months during this quarter. Comparing the volumes of the market, export market in Q3 23 and Q2 23, apart from these issues in South America, we had a drop in demand in the US, which affected the performance of Hercules in the quarter. With this drop, we're using this time to organize and strengthen the manufacturing operations, preparing ourselves for a better portfolio in this unit. With this scenario, we had a pressure on a bit of margin in Q3, which represented 4.5% in the period and 75 in the nine months of 2023. We'd like to highlight the importance of this business vertical for the company, which generates demand for auto parts, and reinforce that we're working strongly to recover our margins uh, through efficiency in our plants. Now we see auto parts. 847 million reais in net revenue, which represents a drop 
in relation to Q322, but with a recovery in relation to Q223. Sergio showed to us what we did to reduce the impacts of the drop in demand from OEMs. We reached 16.4% EBITDA margin in this quarter. You can see in the graphs of net revenue per region by segment, the increase of exports to the US with the sales of breaks by our controlled company master and the growth in revenue with the origin of replacement parts for semi-trailers. This is how we mitigated the drop in the demand from OEMs. We will continue to work to increase our offers, adding new products to our portfolio and strengthening partnerships with OEMs to defend our leadership and also have more synergies. Concerning movement control, I highlight the good performance of the companies that make up this group, which reached 889 million in net revenue with an export market of 38%, Brazil replacement parts 57 and the rest for OEMs. In analyzing the revenues, I, I highlight the following positive factors. Growing demand in replacement parts for light vehicles, increase in sales of shock absorbers by the due to the expansion of the plant of an extreme, expansion of the sales from controlled companies in Asia with new contracts and clients, and the revenue from Juratech company acquired in Q123. A point of attention, we had a more competition in the commercial line due to higher inventories at distributors and more competition from Chinese products in many countries due to the drop in logistics, logistics costs and also the recovery of production in China. On EBITDA margin, we had a new historical record in this quarter, reaching 21.4% in this indicator. This is only possible due to the combination of a strong demand with many initiatives made during the last few years at Frasley, as for example, acquisitions of Nakata and Freemax, which had their results really higher with synergies because they are part of our conglomerate Frasley Mobility. Now we will talk about financial and digital services. 181 million Reasian revenue and 25.2% EBITDA margin in Q3 23. An important growth in comparison with the same period in 2022. Also with the revenue from DB, a company acquired this year. Where And we can see this in the graph. Other highlights of this vertical work. The change in format of sales of random pool sales, which is focusing on, on larger values, allowing operational gains, excellent profile of the clients of random bank with low delinquency, and the change in identity, which will be explained by the CEO, Daniel Eli. Hello, today I want to share with you a new moment in the history of our vertical. Now we are hence a brand that translates us with allowing us. We have financial and digital solutions for logistics and transportation markets. Hands now includes many solutions and today that are offered today by our units. Random Consortius, Random Bank, Random Insurance, Random Ventures, Conexu, we know that there is a lot of space for growth with many growth opportunities in this market of mobility. Because of this, we will really increase our results delivering new products and developing technolo technologies, always thinking of our clients, placing them at the center of our decisions. Apart from this, we will deliver a new distribution channel, which brings together all the solutions of hands. This is our strategy, focus, and ambition. Because since last year, we are may having many actions aligned with the new strategy of our vertical. For example, the creation of Adianti and the acquisition of DB. 
The future, the future is in innovation connected and with technology. The future is mobility. And we are here helping to create it today. We are ready to embrace the present and build the future. Well, that's it. Another vertical getting ready to grow in a consistent and robust way. Finally, I will present also the advanced technology vertical with 33 million reais of revenue in the period. Main highlights in Q3 23 are due to CTR, which had an increase in revenue with the recovery of demand from OEMs in hiring testing services, inauguration of the photovoltaic power plant, which brings a drop in energy costs after Q4 23. And apart from this, can generate additional revenue by selling surplus energy and investments of 6 million for the creation of the testing structure in active safety, passive safety and durability, known as ADAS tests, advanced driver assistance systems. About 9-1, I'd like to mention the launching of the solution for treat pre-treatment and treatment of metal services, and a nanostructured additive with niobium oxide, which increases by 70% the resistance of products to corrosion. It combines sustainability and high performance. Together with adequate painting, can bring an increase in 300% in the resistance to corrosion for the painted parts. It's sustainable. It eliminates many substances in relation to current technologies and reduces the amount of toxic vapors. Also, it needs less water and less energy. The technology is in the final testing phase, and we will begin to sell this in 2024. Now I will pass the floor to Carol to begin our Q&A session. Thank you, Esteban. Thank you, Sergio, Paulo, for the presentations. Before beginning the Q&A session, I have a quick announcement. Unfortunately, Sergio will not be able to be with us in the Q&A session, but Paulo Esteban, Emerson, and David are with us to answer all your questions. So I re please, you can participate following the guidance on the screen. You can ask the question by audio and in writing, or you can send your question through WhatsApp. So our first question comes from Lucas Marchioris, analyst from BTG. Lucas, you have the floor. Thank you. Two topics I'd like to discuss with you. I'm trying to understand the recovery in the heavy truck market. Could you comment during the quarter, the demand, whether we should see Q4 with, do you believe we will have normal sales in Q4, especially implements? Do you, so, and also, is there, are you already recovering from the effect of Euro 6 and also CapEx next year? We know there is a new plant for suspenses, should, do you believe we will, can you talk about the results, the investments, CapEx next year? Thank you. Thank you, Lucas, for the question. I will pass the first question to Esteban. He will talk about Euro 6 and heavy truck market. And the second, Paulo, to talk about CapEx, our expectations this year and next year. And Euro 6, uh, Lucas, before passing the floor to Esteban, this year we're having a drop in the market, a higher drop than we expected. We expected 20%. We're seeing a 25, a 35, 40% drop in heavy truck market due to Euro 5, which sold for a longer time. 50% of all the sales in the market were Euro 5 mar trucks. Now Euro 6 is beginning to recover. Uh, but Stephen will comment on this market and the future. Thank you, Lucas. 
it's a question that we have heard a lot. Truly, it has been difficult to understand the tr heavy truck market. It is, we have seen a drop that is greater than what we expected initially. We used to say that we expected this drop in the truck production would be concentrated in the first semester while they still had Euro 5 trucks. And in the second semester, we, we thought we would begin to see an increase in the production of Euro 6 trucks. What we have seen until now, 50% of all the trucks sold are still Euro 5. This is, this is more than we expected. On the other hand, we begin to see signs of recovery of sales of Euro 6. Recently, one of the associations gave us the sales numbers. And when we compare with September, we see a growth of 27%, almost 30%. And this shows a recovery in terms of volume for the year. We should continue with this drop that Fenabravi, Fenabravi estimates at 40% 40, 40 in comparison with last year. In the last quarter, we begin to have seasonality in the sector. On the other hand, we're very aligned with the associations in terms of 2024. We begin to see a recovery. We believe that this will begin at the end of Q124, where at least what we see today Industry production, the sale of trucks can recover 10 to 20%, which is very positive. Even in this scenario, where with auto parts dropping 40%, we have been able to protect margins. Now I'd like to pass the floor to Paulo to talk about CapEx. Okay, thank you, Esteban. Lucas, good morning. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your question. In terms of organic CapEx, historically, we have been around 20 to 25% of our EBIT. And for next year, we should be around the same percentage. What has changed during the years are investments in M&A. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Our next question comes from Luis Capistrano, analyst from Itaú. Good morning. Thank you. You mentioned in the release and during the call the elements that affected the margin in implements. We saw the lower price, also operations abroad in Latin America and North America drop in demand. What are the reasons? What hurt the margins during this period? The most relevant factors that hurt the profitability. And also in terms, I'd like to know your feeling how these variables will be in the future. You said there will be seasonality at the end of the year, 20% increase next year for the domestic market. Could you focus more on market recovery, export market, especially the US, which is the most promising, but also competition in the domestic market? Do you believe that the next quarters will continue to be like this one? Should you look for more market share? Luis, thank you for the questions. Esteban can answer well. Reminding you some data before Esteban. 
during the year, we had a share of 27% in the first semester, now 32% market share. During the year, although the market is has problems with volumes, we worked with 90, 120 days. Today, we had short, so low share. Sometimes we have to make adjustments. And Esteban will comment and also answer the rest of your question, Luis. Thank you, Luis. This will be the topic of the quarter. I begin saying that this was a conscious decision on the part of our management to bring more volume, especially in the domestic market, to participate in the bids and lots. And we have some positive effects for the company as a whole. First, we compensate part of this drop in the export market. We bring volume inside because all implements leave our company with a lot of accessories, brake pads, and this brings a lot of synergies. And finally, as Paulo mentioned in the conference call, we also had the positive effect in needing less work, working capital and uh, lower debt, at least 300 million less in debt to show that the, it was a conscious movement. And David mentioned the fourth positive point, the gain in market share. Now, looking forward, in terms of the export market, we saw the drop in the export market. We can divide this into two geographies, U.S. and Latin America. U.S., I would say this quarter, we acquired Hercules until the second quarter. We were above our business case numbers. And in Q3, we really did what we had foreseen. There is a negative scenario in re in comparison with the volumes in Q1 and 2. And we, see, we also see positive signs because we did not, what we were not able to sell in Hercules, this is being delayed for the future quarters. So with we thought 2023 would be very good for Hercules and 2024 more normal. What we're seeing now are two good years ahead of us for Hercules. So it is becoming positive, balancing the sales in the next years. And the markets in Latin America, yes, they had a drop in volume due to the scenario the current situation in Chile and Argentina. These are the two main markets that buy our products. This also has a result in the average price. Most of the average price is built with our exports. Export products have a higher ticket and contribute a lot to sustain the average price. Since we had this combination of factors in this quarter, greater export market, smaller. This also put pressure on the average price. And we had the impact of Argentina, which has an impact on our balance sheet, the higher the taxes that were levied and affected sales. So this led to more pressure on the profit margin. Looking forward, we're working. We're not happy with this margin. We're, we're happy with the share, but not with the margin. We're working strongly on efficiency. And obviously here, we want to recover the profitability of sales in the next quarters. Like we say, we want a balance between leadership and margin and for this, we have to work hard every day. Now, looking at Q4, we have to remember that there is seasonality in Q4. 
apart from this we announced in our release about an update we will do an sap this will help this will need a stop to change our erp during the vacation we also have vacation and this helped us to anticipate some sales so we will have seasonality due to a change in software and vacation looking forward in 2024 we expect a recovery in volumes and prices bearing in mind that we see we don't see much competition in price next year thank you very clear now our next question comes from Andre Ferreira, Bradesco BBI. Thank you for participating. Good morning. I have two points here. First, in truck implements. I'd like to confirm that these campaigns we're only during the core quarter and that now the focus will be on recovering profitability. Do you believe these discounts will continue in Q4? Randon. This, this, do you believe that these new contracts will bring lower prices from competitors? In terms of Hercules, we, I'd like, did you know that the, there would be a drop? And why you believe these orders will be delayed? Do you believe this will continue? How does this impact, how does this impact your plans to increase capacity? Thank you, Andre. Well, it's a continuation of the previous question. Question. I believe it's a topic that gen is generating a lot of questions. Reminding you, Andre, the sales campaign was only in the quarter, especially for grains, trailers for grains to reduce inventory. So it was a short campaign. Another point, the large lots, that is another campaign. We don't believe these, these campaigns with discounts will continue in other quarters. Esteban can men talk about prices, competition, and Hercules, what affected the demand in Q3 there. Perfect. Thank you, David. It's important to talk about this. David already answered concerning the sales campaign and large lots. We should see these effects because we took the orders, but we didn't deliver everything. So there should be some effect also in the Q4 and maybe a little in Q1 next year because... Our portfolio is 90, 120 days. So sales were made, some were delivered in Q3 uh, and are in the results. Others will continue to be delivered, especially in Q4. So this effect we can continue to see in the last quarter. Now, concerning the reaction of competitors, the competitive environment during the year was more healthy the market did not drop significantly we saw good volumes we had good value volume especially in related to tanks and agro business we sold well so we didn't see we didn't see a stronger reaction in price from competition they have maintained their prices and thus we were able to increase our market share. Now, going on to Hercules, what we saw here, 
is a reaction to higher interest rates in the U.S. This began to result not in cancellations, but delays in orders. Some clients that wanted to re receive their trailers delayed the delivery of the trailers to next year, maybe because of high interest rates in the U.S. So they are expecting a soft landing, and then they will probably confirm the orders next year. This doesn't change our plans. We reported here investments. We're making investments in Hercules, especially in structure, but we continue with plans to increase our sales there with semi-trailers and auto parts. We, we have said we want to have 30% of our revenue coming from abroad in this quarter. We're close to 20% with the effects we mentioned, but we continue to expand our presence, especially in mature markets. Hercules, like the acquisition of Hercules, and the acquisition of Juratech in the UK. Thank you. Our next question comes from Gabriel Tini from Santander. Thank you for participating, Gabriel. Good morning, Paulo Esteban. Concerning auto parts, the contract you signed in October at St. Spences, can you give us details? What will this represent in terms of capex and margin? And also, Castor Tech in Moji, the construction of the plant, and if the contracts include synergies in the future. Thank you, Gabriel. Well, here, I will ask his Timon to answer about the strategy on the project as a whole. We're very proud. It's a long-term project. And then Paolo can supplement the issue of CAD. Part of this project needs approval from the authorities. Okay, Esteban, please talk about the contract at suspenses and the construction in Mojiguasu. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for following us. In fact, we need to remember within our strategies, the first is to defend our leadership position. We are leaders in most of our products and defending leadership is difficult. Sometimes you may believe it's easy to have a high 40% leadership in market share in, in suspension. When you are a leader, you have to defend your position. And for us to defend this leadership, we need to be close to our partners and in all the products. Now, uh, for example, in auto parts, we stopped being reactive in terms of new projects and we became active, bringing technology, new technologies to OEMs, and this uh, made them more loyal to us. We're very happy to sign this long-term contract at Suspenses, and we're working actively to look for synergies. And yes, this contract was signed, thinking, uh, seeing this as a door that is opening to sell more auto parts. I hope I answered your question. 
Paulo can comment. Thank you, Gabriel, for your question. We continue with expectations, bearing in mind that we need, uh, we will have approval from the authorities this year. Based on the guidance from our legal department, we cannot give you more details of this transaction. But as soon as we have the approval from the authorities, we will share with you additional details. Thank you. Now, our next question from Fernando, analyst from XP. Good morning. Thank you for participating. Good morning. Thank you. First, a follow-up on the contract of suspenses. Yes, we saw that you need approval from the authorities. Can we expect similar contracts in the next months? And do you have an, an update about Adianti, as you mentioned in the previous quarter? Thank you. Thank you for the question. The first question on the contract of suspenses and other similar contracts is Teban can answer, and Paulo, concerning Adianti, you can comment, we had a very good year at Adianti, so let's begin with Esteban and then Paulo. Thank you. Well, we have, yeah, we have the intention, the desire to sign other contracts like this one, but you should understand that these are not easy contracts. For example, a global truck is very relevant. We believe that our auto parts have the quality, our production, our management can deliver these product, products. So it's an issue of commercial negotiations, being close to the client, and also be strong in technology. In this point, our fifth vertical advanced technology will contribute in the three mega trends we're working on, which is electricity, suspenses, has an electric axle, intelligent materials, not only compost from Frasley with materials that have steel components, Ni1, another example where we can apply current materials, making them more robust, more lighter, more robust and lighter. And the third mega trend, which is embedded electronics. We have Randon Smart. They connect with Adianti. Most of the products we sell, they are already have Randon Smart solutions being offered to the client. We're working hard to announce new contracts, but it's not something very frequent. It's not something very easy. And since I talked about Adianti, Paulo can mention the operations. Okay, Fernanda, thank you for the participation, for your question. We're very happy with Adianti. The company is doing very well. Almost a thousand rental contracts signed, which represents two and a half times the expected number of rental contracts this year. We're building a journey with the client, with transparency services, and adding value. So based on this, uh, it's a very positive market. Distributors of Rondon also contributing in a fundamental way. Well, we should close 
the first year with a break even. The project is doing very well. Very clear. Thank you. The next question. Felipe Lenza, analyst from Citibank. Thank you for participating, Felipe. Well, good morning, Paulo Esteban. Well, congratulations for the re resilient results. Looking currently, 65% of auto parts and implements are financed by the group. So give us more color about the products you, you offer. For example, pool sales consortium. Do you? The second question, the possibility of offering financing for auto parts. So, do you believe this is possible? Thank you, Lenza. Yes, you talked about the new brand Hansa. And reminding you that although we have initiatives, the most of our focus is to support the other companies of the group. I will ask Esteban to talk more about this, what else we can have in hands in terms of services, including logistics. Thank you, David. Paulo, if you wish to supplement. But in fact, thank you for the question. In fact, it's an important component of our strategy. I remember in the beginning of the year when we had a credit crisis in the country, most commercial banks put restrictions and credit became more expensive. Our bank became... Our bank did more operations with clients and helped the sales of the companies because we know our client, we've been working with our clients for a long time or our distributors. So that's why we use the bank to make our client able to buy the accessories, implements, trucks and do business. This is the objective of Random Corp, connect people. This is what we do. And we saw when we reviewed the strategy of this vertical, the possibility of making even more progress, creating our ecosystem in logistics. We have to remember not only Random Bank and Consortius, the pool sales company, we have Random Brokerage House, also brought random startups to create an ecosystem for logistics to do this migration to digital logistics. DB that was acquired in the beginning of this year. Adianti was acquired last year. So we're creating a portfolio of services. In terms of other products, other services to be offered, my hands, what we have here is insurance. We have insurance. We want to create a platform for a digital portfolio where clients and partners can do business and also rental as Adianti does. This financing, this structure that I mentioned of hands is also at the service of our auto parts division Auto Parts uses this structure and this helps close deals. In general, this is it. It's correct, Esteban. Complete answer. Thank you. Thank you, Felipe. So, our next question Isabella Lamas. UBS. Good morning, Isabella. Thank you for participating. 
Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. I have two questions. The first, movement control. It continues with a solid performance, growing in volumes. Margins are also very high. And you mentioned one of the factors is acquisitions. You are extracting synergies from, from acquisitions. Nakata had record margin, record revenue. Nakata sh shock absorbers. What are the plans for Nakata shock absorbers? You always said you want to strengthen Nakata, extract synergies. So what is what do you expect from Nakata next year? Are you thinking of internationalization, doing cross-selling with clients abroad for Nakata? And another question, advanced technology, a new sector, you have a lot of innovation. And today, we, we saw you at the Expo show, you showed the new products. Do you have an update to give us about the new products? If I'm not if I'm not mistaken in ESIS, you wanted to sell 100 electric axles. So what is the evolution nanocomposites to? How is the penetration of this product? Do you see other OEMs interested wanting to develop products? Rondon Solar. What is the situation? Can you give us an update? of this segment. Thank you. Good, Bella, thank you for the questions. Yes, we will be able to talk about all the companies, all the verticals. Well, here, Emerson, it's good to have you here. We can talk about the excellent results in movement control, Nakata, one of the jewels of the crown in mobility. And also, I'd like to pass the floor to Esteban, to talk about all our initiatives in disruptive innovations, technology. Okay, Emerson, can you begin? Then Esteban. Well, Isabella, first, thank you for the question. I will show our perception. We're on the stock market. We have, I believe that some of, a, some of the reasons for our success are due to the combination of business. But what we had a lot of expansion with acquisitions. And one of them, with its size, may appear. But all the acquisitions we made, Freemax, Controil, and now recently Juratech, all of them are helping us to combine good stories in each one of these in a larger ecosystem. And this allows us to have interesting synergies. In Nakata, in Nakata shock absorbers, it, we made changes, structural changes in production. We moved them to a new plant. There we also have a distribution center for all the all the companies for the clients in the south and north. We had an important evolution access to markets that Nakata did not have in the past before the acquisition. And we created a global reference 
and this has begun. So we have a strong presence of Nakata in South America, and we're creating this platform, including Colombia, Mexico, and now with Juratech, the distribution company in the UK, we want to take Nakata products to the UK and to Europe. So this shows the potential of growth. The main product of Nakata is shock absorbers. When we had when we purchased the company, we had 16% market share. Today we have 24, 25% market share after three years. And when we purchased, we made a we made a conference call for the acquisition. The recurring EBITDA was 62 million. Now it's three times this, three years later. So we we are happy to be part of this ecosystem, as mentioned by Esteban during the presentation. So this is what I had to say. Thank you. Emerson, since you are here, the second question has to do with advanced technology. And one of the great deliveries we had last year, which is helping the result, is compost. Can you talk about recently we had the inauguration of the plant of compost, totally automated, automated by Auton, our manufacturing manufacturing automation unit. Can you talk about the acceptance by our clients? Thank you, Stephen. Well, Compus, our startup in mobility, the company is a little over a year old. We have solutions to optimize the use of steel using composite materials. They have lighter solutions with better designs. They also have technology, new technologies in parts, much more refined now. In the case, our main client, we have two large clients in this division. One of them is Randon OEM, which uses the supports, and Iveco OEM, with larger applications. Today, within Iveco, with one part, we, 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 with one part, we have three solutions in one part. And I remind you, we began this journey to create this with composites to shield our assets and use them for other things because we knew that the we know that the future will include electricity and also new developments in brakes although this is a little far we may have a compost that is much stronger than what, what we imagined before any disruptive technology can affect the friction area the main client today is Iveco. We have made a lot of new projects with them, but we have conversations with all the OEMs in Brazil, and we have a pipeline of new products that are very, a very robust pipeline for the next few years. And this is 
in our advanced technology division. We just won an award of best, best uh, supplier of Iveco. We won an award, best supplier of Iveco with our partner who is attaching value to our pioneer work in this area. Very good, Emerson. Thank you. We, we continue. We're, we're very happy with all the fronts. In Nai one company, we have 65 projects, 35 that are more advanced. One of them, we announced a partnership partnership with Clintex for surface treatment. This makes the product not only lighter and more resistant, but it allows the companies to use less components and to be more sustainable. And every time we begin a new area, we discover new applications of Ni1. And with this, we're happy. And also, they have a great challenge at Ni1 to give priority. Because you begin with many projects, but you must have focus to deliver these products and transform them into revenue. So we have a partnership we are supplying components to Veggi for paints. We're supplying products for paints at Veggi. We know the potential is great. We want to transform this into revenue. Now, concerning ECs, ECs electric uh, axles, the main obstacle is price. The cost of the technology is still very high for mass use. We have the three stages of adoption. Those who are pioneers, early adopters, the, and after you prove the business case, the project, and then mass adoption. We're still in the beginning stages. We have sold some electric axles, but only for those who want to improve their indicators in emissions. We believe that working on cost reduction, especially in the batteries, which is the main item of cost, with a lower cost in batteries, we can get to a good business case and mass adoption. And then use the and then mass adoption. Concerning Randall Solar, we last year we announced this product at Fenatron. It was a prototype in the beginning stages. During this year, we're working on the validation. We have a test, our own test facilities for tests, but we're not offering in the market. We need, we will we believe we will need more time to sell this product. So in general, this is it. I hope you answered your, I answered your question. Perfect. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. So we, now we will have the last question from Jonathan Cotres, analyst from JP. Okay, Jonathan, thank you. Good afternoon. Two questions. The first about Frosley Mobility. I would like to know about synergies. An improvement in margins. Can Frosley increase a bit the margin? The second, Argentina. I know it's difficult to talk about the situation of the country. What have you done to mitigate the problems with the import permits, import barriers? And what will be the effect on the next 
quarters. Perfect, Jonathan. Thank you for the questions. So Esteban and Emerson can comment. Emerson, Juratech is the beginning of very good integration you're having in Juratech, the distributor in England, the UK, Argentina. Can you talk about the business, the performance? And Esteban can talk about Randon Carp. Randon Argentina, which had a more complex quarter. Argentina is going through this situation for a long time. We've been there for a long time. We say that Argentina, you have many aspects to consider, but it is the second largest market in South America. So it's important to be present there. So, first, Emerson, then Esteban. Okay, Jonathan, thank you. In fact, the current time in Frasley Mobility shows our journey to create synergies in within our businesses. So, Frasley could not do everything by itself. So we're looking at things from a different focus. And this is important when we make acquisitions. When we announce an acquisition, everyone wants to know about multiples to understand if it was good or bad. And we don't evaluate this. We look at the potential synergies that the business can bring us. We have done this, and we have tried to be transparent with the market. And we, we never had difficulty in having a giant evolution in synergies, much more than we expected. Now, Nakata, we expected in five years to have 100 million in synergies. And we had twice this amount. We optimized the model. And we had things that were smaller in the business case. And after, they ended up being larger synergies. We also, Juratech, Juratech. We were looking at synergies in five years. We expected 5 million pounds. After a year, we will make an evaluation. But I can tell you that after nine months, we already have half of this in the business case. So, so we're still in the infancy, but we captured already synergies in sourcing and now so we can we are being very effective and as as we move we see more and more synergies it's difficult but we can generate value with acquisitions. So the truth is we have been very diligent in being positive in these acquisitions. So we have good things ahead of us at Juratech. In Nakata, most of the synergies were already captured. We still have some, but few. Argentina is the second largest market in South America. And we're here in Caxias do Sul, in the south of the country. The, the, the distance from our plant to 
to Buenos Aires is the same as the one to Sao Paulo, but we have to live with these difficulties in Argentina. In Frasley Mobility, Argentina represents a little under 10% of the revenue. So it was 15, 18% of the company, now it's 10. We have a difficulty to manage those good times we had. Random Corp, but in terms of sectors that we follow, there are sectors where we have more or less difficulties. We, as Frasley Mobility, we have to manage. We have, we have sent part of our production to Argentina. And we have surplus cash there. So we have to preserve the value of this money in Argentina. We're having difficulties in bringing this money back or to buy suppliers. So together with the corporate team, and the local team, we have seen how can we work to avoid our resources from losing value due to the inflation in Argentina. It's no longer possible to do uh, currency hedge. It has become very it has become very expensive in Argentina. We. We are continuing to offer services to our client, selling small lots. So we are there serving our clients and trying to do our best to continue and avoid losing our position in the market in Argentina. We are cautious, but we hope that Argentina will recover and go back to normal times. The inflation in the last 12 months in Argentina has been 140%. Okay. Thank you. I will pass the floor to Paulo to talk about Argentina, the scenario of the country and the impact we're having on our company. Okay, Paulo. Thank you. Thank you for the question. This is a topic. We hope the country will recover from its problems. It's a dramatic situation. But as mentioned by Emerson, this is also important for Randon, Argentina. The results were always positive, and this helps our margins in Brazil. So it's an important market, Argentina. We have a team with a lot of experience in Argentina, both Frasley and Randon OEM, which is very resilient in times like this. What we did in Randon Argentina in the last few months was to decrease the size of the operation and also reduce to a minimum the exchange rate exposure. We don't have debts in dollars in Argentina for more than three years. And the effect in the quarterly results, we had we we had the end of of a, a debt in Brazil in order to avoid an exposure impact in our balance because a mega devaluation 
will happen either now or maybe next year. And we saw in the last three months, both in Frasley and Randon, we had to stop sales in Argentina. Periods when you can't even quote a price in Argentina. We paralyzed sales during some days. So it's a complex situation in Argentina, but we are being able to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Paulo. I'd like to thank everyone. We're closing the Q&A session. And now I pass the floor to Paulo for his final comments. Thank you, Carol. Well, once again, I'd like to thank all the participants. It's an important time for us. Thank you. And we continue implementing our strategy. On November 28th, we will have a site visit in Caxias do Sul in the south of Brazil. We hope you will be able to participate and be with us so we can talk about all these projects and we're available. If you need further clarification, please, our investor relations team will be available to supply any comments. Thank you. We wish you a good day. Thank you.